Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani, and today I'm gonna to talk about a concept called highly sensitive people and how this relates to narcissism. Now, over the years, a few people have reached out about this concept and how this idea of the highly sensitive person may really put a person at risk for getting into a narcissistic relationship and what happens if a person who is a highly sensitive person ends up in a narcissistic relationship. This concept of the highly sensitive person has been written about extensively by someone named Dr. Elaine Aaron, and you can check out her website for more information as she's really the expert on this. Her last name is A-R-O-N. Dr. Aaron and others believe that the highly sensitive style reflects a personality style that is observed in a person who is more impacted by environmental stimulation of all kinds. The criteria for highly sensitive personhood includes things like throughout their lives, they have been called hypersensitive by other people. They are, they, um, they, they themselves feel like they've always been overstimulated by their senses, for example, their sight, their smell. They can be easily upset by seeing violence in the media or movies or other disturbing imagery. They will really try to avoid stress and stressful situations get really overwhelmed when there's a lot to do, be overwhelmed by large groups of people, identify themselves as being emotional, is how they talk about themselves, and many times being regarded as introverted or shy, having higher than normative pain sensitivity, being very attuned to the subtle reactions of those around you or even subtle variations in the environment, noticing something has changed or moved, being very detail-oriented, avoiding making mistakes, and trying to please other people. So these are the kinds of things that Dr. Aaron and others sort of describe as sort of the highly sensitive person. Now, this list obviously shares lots of overlaps with other styles that can include terms such as introvert, having sensory processing issues, being somatic, being dependent, having uh, pro issues with perfectionism, being an empath, or even being anxious. However, Dr. Aaron and others argue that this style represents a very specific kind of personality that is not introversion or neuroticism or dependency. I actually have people in my life who likely meet these criteria for being a highly sensitive person, and they're actually deeply empathic, quite self-aware, and I have to say, out of love and respect, I try to do the workarounds with them, suggest activities that make sense, monitor the environment to sort of make things, at least in my world, easier for them. But when I think about what would or has happened to them when they got into or if they got into a relationship with a narcissistic person, I actually shudder to think about what would happen to them. So as you read this list, you may already be rubbing your head and feel worried for someone who has this highly sensitive personality style. Perhaps it's, it's you who has a highly sensitive style getting into a relationship with a narcissistic person, because you're absolutely right if you're thinking this, it's not going to end well. Well, what could go wrong if a highly sensitive person got in a relationship with a narcissist? Let's break it down. Highly sensitive people are actually vulnerable to narcissistic relationships because of their empathy and their commitment to going out of their way to get it right. And they may be less likely to spot red flags as to try to get it right. They'll be more focused on getting it right than on spotting the red flags. Or they may gaslight themselves and feel that, oh, here I am again being too emotional instead of seeing the narcissistic behavior within the relationship as being the problem. Within the narcissistic relationship with the highly sensitive person, there is so much more potential for gaslighting, for the narcissistic person to actually call the highly sensitive person out as overly sensitive. And it's a label that a highly sensitive person may actually agree with, even when the highly sensitive person is having an appropriate reaction to what is real emotional abuse. The risk of sort of overwhelm for a person with a highly sensitive style means that on the side of the narcissist, there's a greater risk of them being met with contempt, dismissiveness, anger, and even more gaslighting about a highly sensitive person feeling overwhelmed in a crowd or feeling overwhelmed by stress. The inherent lack of empathy observed in narcissism means that 
the narcissistic person is not going to be empathic to the environmental sensitivities of a highly sensitive person, but will actually harness them as a place of shaming the highly sensitive person. More often than not, the narcissistic person will invalidate the highly sensitive person as crazy or make other disparaging comments about their mental health. The empathic elements of the highly sensitive person, especially being highly attuned to the emotions around them, can be quite treacherous, as you could imagine, in a narcissistic relationship. The sort of ups and downs, the labile shifting emotions in a narcissistic relationship can all mean that the sort of the hyper monitoring style of a highly sensitive person who finds themselves in one of these relationships will be absolutely exhausting. The constant shape shifting and eggshell walking that's required by a narcissistic relationship is bound to be more pronounced in a relationship such as this. Now, narcissistic relationships are difficult for everyone. It's the nature of the beast and really difficult for everyone. There is no personality style out there that we could have that would make any of us immune from the challenges of these relationships. But in the highly sensitive person who is much more attuned to the nuances of the environment and the people in it, more, who are more impacted by stress, and are more likely to try and avoid mistakes and maybe even over cater to the needs of those in their environment, these folks are in a particularly precarious position. The tendency of narcissistic people to weaponize what they perceive as the weaknesses of other people means that the vulnerabilities, for example, things like the pain sensitivity or the difficulties that highly sensitive people have watching violence or their, their exquisite emotional awareness, those things will be exploited, mocked, and shamed. The greatest risk is that the highly sensitive person may get stuck in a really unhealthy cycle of trying to please the narcissistic person. The narcissistic person continuing to dominate and invalidate the highly sensitive person and the highly sensitive person trying even harder than instead of saying, ah, no, this is not healthy. If you are a highly sensitive person, it would be very important to work in your own therapy or whatever form of sort of growth work you're doing about how to safely choose a partner to give yourself permission to set boundaries that feel safe, to understand your personality style, and to not pathologize or gaslight yourself, to have trusted people that you can turn to and share your feelings and experiences, as well as use therapy as a place to share and process these experiences. Again, it's difficult for any of us to navigate a relationship with someone who invalidates us and gaslights us and manipulates us. But if your personality style as a highly sensitive person makes you even more vulnerable to the machinations and manipulations of narcissism, it's really important to be aware of what narcissism is about and how best to protect yourself. I want to put in a, a, cl a clarifying statement here. Some of you are saying, but hey, Dr. Romani, you're the one who says that narcissistic people are the ones who are often very sensitive in the face of criticism. So let me be clear on this. This construct of the highly sensitive person is a very specific personality style that Dr. Aaron and others have built up. The sensitivity to criticism in narcissistic people is a different, is sort of a different game. And I almost think it's better that I call it reactivity in the face of criticism in narcissism. Because people who are narcissistic, if anyone gives them feedback, if anyone even gives them a small critique, if anyone tells them that something about them is not perfect, narcissistic people tend to be very hyper-reactive 
to that feedback, and angrily so. You would not see that in a highly sensitive person. So it, it may be more of that that sort of that hypersensitivity is more of a hyperreactivity we see in narcissism. So that's a sort of a definitely a different issue. And the other thing is that the narcissistic people may be very reactive to feedback or criticism, but they have no trouble dishing it out. You would definitely not see that in the highly sensitive person framework. I hope that clarifies it. I know more than a few of you over the years have actually sent in this question about the issue of the highly sensitive person, and I hope that clarifies it. Thanks again.